Welcome back to the Adventures in Silvernell. This is episode 5 of Summer Song's Guide to Silvernell, a new series that sees the god of time taking a trio of adventurers, the Dirty Three, on a wild ride through their own timeline. But before we begin all of that, I just want to say, hey Michael. Oh, hey. Michael's going to play three characters. I'm Scott Nicholson, your Game Master. Between him and I, you've got a wild ride. Uh... Summer Song currently is joined by his friend Born Toro, the god of death, and it is just now the Dirty Three sees exactly what is happening to them. Last episode, they freed a dragon named Canarex from the roid hoppers of one of the hopper farms, and now Summer Song holds them in the palm of his hands. Absidy, lip the slip, an Ewa person. You see now that you are our <laughs> entertainment. This is Bruntoro, and I am Stax, the god of- You are Summersong! I am Summersong, the god of music. Time! The life you are living on this piece of the sentient cube is one of infinite timelines. I have kept them organized and separate for the benefit of your planet. What you are seeing is the god of time and the god of death, the only two level one gods of a vast pantheon. We have made a wager between us, and you have one. Well, Bruntoro has one. Now, in your travels, you will get to keep every item you attain moving forward. Why have I chosen you three? It's a good question. Thank you. No one asked that! You have the greatest, most random, most delicious finale of all lives in this timeline. <coughs> uh, no pressure. Any more questions? Absidy kind of look, looks up at uh, Summer Song, and Absidy is like obsessed with Fey. Uh, Summer Song is a pretty famous uh, person, you know, came came and saved the world. Um, so he's like kind of like silent for the first time ever, but he's like quivering with anticipation. He's like, <laughs> um, and he's like, uh, uh, um, uh, um, I. I am oh, wow, absolutely ecstatic to be in your presence. And he kind of is like on his like knees. He's like at this point, he's like got he's like pushed down, lift the slip, and I, and it a person has taken a knee, and he's like he's like bowing in his palm of the hand. He's like oh oh, it's just so great the Fey. I was on my way to the Fey, and I absolutely am obsessed with you. I I, I spit it out. It happened, didn't think it was happening so soon. I I want to. I was on. I want to re. I want to restart the faith, the Fallen Kingdom of Symphony. <clears throat> the Fallen Kingdom of Symphony? No! Everyone there died thanks to Asgarath. He wishes to rewrite time. Well, well, well hold on. There's no lots of timelines to go no, around. No, no, no. I don't want to rewrite time. I, my goal in life, which is why, why I left my home, was to go to the Fallen Kingdom of Symphony and reestablish it legitimately. I want, I want to, as a half elf, Reestablish the, the, the kingdom. I want to rebuild it, and in your honor, because of what you did for all of us, you saved every everyone. You stopped Azgarath, and I want to be the the new fate protector to to take up that that mantle. That's why I, I do... okay. Go ahead and roll me a persuasion check. What the hell are you talking about? Shut up! It's a game. Let's see what his persuasion is. Uh, which which level of persuasion am I using currently? Am I using my level uh, oh. six or my level four? Sorry, you are <laughs> on level four. Oh no, okay. you're at level six. No, he's got you at a six. We still, which would okay, be the last actually. episode. Last episode. Okay, let me look at the, uh, let me just get the right numbers. <laughs> <laughs> this is so wild. Oh Jesus. <laughs> okay, a twenty-one. Okay. And uh, uh, at the same time, while Iwa is kneeling and, and Summer Song and um, uh, Summer Song and Absidy are talking, Iwa is staring into or staring out into like looking for this Bruntura because he's like, is he there? He's like a physical presence. Uh, you just see it? the glowing eyes of the Nemecolopterus that is Bruntura over the shoulder, but you see full uh, Irva Summer Song face. We'll say in his summer uh, attire. It, it what is Form. staring into these eyes and attempts to start to speak telepathically to it, um, and is like, 
trying to see if, if they can hear me. So, can you hear me? Death. I honor you. I am of you. Can Brutoro, can Brutoro hear her? You just see this darkness where the eyes disappear into this like light fog that disappears into the air and you just hear in your mind whoa, like an echo before it's you have much to take away to be a true master of death. I view you as entertainment but I will need more than a 21 to be persuaded. <laughs> He's catching on. <laughs> is that me, are you him telling me to roll the check or am I talking back? <laughs> uh, is that you uh, telling him to roll the check? <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm saying like, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm more than just crazy gonna let him do it. Oh, let's well, just clarify. It made it sound like you wanted to roll a check. That's on you. <laughs> All right, so it looks like it you was, got a lot more to prove, but yeah, that's possible. It was, it was, it uh, still continues to speak to him, uh, and uh, I wish, I wish not to be you, but only to honor you, to move through life as a hand, a death, a finger, only the tip of the finger. If <laughs> I mean, only the tip. Summer the song and Brew Toro, like you see their faces, they're both just looking at you. Okay. I wish to be an avatar of death. With this bow, I pledge myself to death and bringing all those I find and you find worthy of death to you swiftly. And then she kind of reminds him of all the kills she's racked up <laughs> in the in the few mm. hours she's been working for him. And then she's like, I've sent many your way. <laughs> mm. I like this. Yes, but if you if you do that and you you know give them anything, they wouldn't naturally have that in their timeline. Well, I don't think any of this is natural at this point. That is true. We can always take it away. I kind of like this idea. I'm 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 leaning towards it. Yeah, I can tell you, or I can see it in your eyes. Just giving it away. Yeah, it is. Okay, go ahead. I'll let you take this one. Okay. Where's that bow? <laughs> Just like, whoa, this black mist radi uh, radiates around your bow. Your bow's going to have a plus one to it now. And every shot that you land is a plus three necrotic damage. And as it hits the body, tentacles of black come out of it. So for one whole turn, if they are hit, um, that black goo will like tentacle up in the air. So even if they're behind stuff or whatever, you'll be able to find them. So it's like a beacon for them for one round if they like hide or something. It doesn't like, like you'd still, if they go half cover behind something, they still raise mm -hmm. their armor class and you'd still have to shoot that. But if somehow they, you know, jumped in 10,000 pots and you have to find them, you'd be able to know which one. <laughs> I think that's pretty good. That's ballsy. I mean, we're early on in this thing. <laughs> All right, boom. Got it. And I guess the drunk is looking for something? He's silent. Just drunk. He's chilling. <laughs> He's like, uh... What? Where are we? Who? Where are you? Perfect. Get out of my way, Brodoro! I now drop you off in the year 231 AGW. <clears throat> you are all level 4 adventurers. And I pop you off in... I pop you off. I drop you off in right, the off. Silver Mountains. Right as you get... Oh, yeah. In the Silver Mountains. Uh, right as you get to the Quiet Pass, a toll point into part of the Fey known as the Quiet Highlands, Absidy finds himself on the other side of a large ma magical barrier guarded by food folk. These in particular look like peppers. Once again, these food folk are living vegetables, sentient vegetables that walk around. Lip, uh, so Lip the Slip and Ooh a Person run up on the situation, but find they are quickly blocked by two female half-elf vile soldiers. What you see before you 
is a large river going through the mountain where it looks like it's starting to turn into the Fae of the Quiet Highlands. There seems to be some building that represents that Fae and a building that represents maybe the Isle Kingdom. There are guards, very tense on one side of half-elf females, aimed towards the other side of these vegetables with their ranged weapons. It's very tense. And in the middle, there's a big congregation of uh, half-elf soldiers and food folk talking. And, uh... Still, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the guards will tell you, you cannot pass. Uh, the quiet pass is now blocked completely until issues are resolved. You'll have to go all the way around or take the monorail. Uh, 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 lip steps up, uh, well, perhaps we can simply just help you resolve the issue and then we can pass. Uh, well, one do any of you speak Edish? Uh... Need to look at a thing. <laughs> I mean, our recently our translator has passed away, and we're kind of left just kind of figuring it out. So if any of you speak Edish, that would be good. That is the uh, food or the talk of the food food language. It will. Uh, it was steps forward and lip goes. Uh, well, what if we don't need to use our words? And it will then speaks into the mind of that person. I can communicate with anyone who can speak a language. It just got in my mind. What do you mean? Just talk to me telepathically. It's like a party trick. And uh, says. Well, uh, protocol says we we can't just take you to the conflict, but we could take you up to the uh, guardhouse and we could speak with our commander. I think your trick would be quite helpful. Yeah, sure. We got we. we Absolutely. Can they? Can we see? Do we see uh, Absidy? Are we aware that he's all the way across that river, just surrounded by those peppers and just like waving at you? Like what the fuck? Oh, oh, oh! oh. You are fat. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh. He's very. Uh, I just got the, in Tarzan. He's Jane Doolittle. He's like. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, found Faye. He speaks Sylvan. I don't know if that helps for them because they speak a very. The they're just looking at each other. Did he got up? Did he be a duty? Did he ah? Did he put you to a whole hair? It's weird language. Yeah. Beepy baba. Stop beeping at me. Eh. You looking up something? Are they beasts? Yeah. Uh, nope. Uh, they're essentially a monster race. They're like a, like a, they're humanoids. Okay, now I got you. I got don't you. think your characters have ever met a food folk before. Yeah, no, they definitely. He definitely hasn't. He's no. He is aware that they're probably fey, and he's like, that's cool enough. He yeah. has no idea. Like, he's like. I don't know anything about Faye, I just have researched them. You know, a yeah. study that he said, he's like, that's a cool concept. He's like, oh, here you are. <laughs> I was going to meet you. you are, uh, <laughs> so he's, he's, uh, but yeah, I don't think exactly anything he can do. So, okay, great. Yeah, he's just like, just like, uh, she's, I don't know, gonna make a persuasion check to not be hostile? <laughs> uh, and, like, uh, well, kind of be like, I don't know. I'll let like, you do a persuasion or a performance. I'll take persuasion. Visual persuasion. Uh, <laughs> it's a higher DC because they don't. I think understand. he's trying to. Yeah, I think he's trying to like. It's one of those things where he's like he's just like trying to talk and communicate and like he's like trying to examine them, but like uh -huh. almost he's like kind of treating them like an animal. But he's like trying to like like examine them without being like aggressive, um, which is why I was kind of making it a persuasion pick. But I got you. We mean, but yes. Oh wait. No, nope, they're not. Mm. I got all these animal spells. I don't got animal spells. They take out these spears, just start poking Ooh. you. Eat a kick off. 23. One of them puts his spear down. They just start sniffing you and kind of poking you. Idi baba chiki. Iki koi. Ata, ata. And they all just start pointing at the magic field. And two of them just grab each other and start strangling each other, but not really. Ah, ah, idi da. 
and they all <laughs> plant and wait and look at the wall as you hear the discussion through the magic wall. We, un we don't understand you. <laughs> <laughs> Does it, I, I kind of, I kind of approach the wall and kind of like examine it. Does it, I mean, like, I guess, t I, I'm going to touch it, I guess. We're making an icon icon to check of some sort. I guess I, I don't know how else to like examine sure, the barrier. Sure, icon to check. Um, okay. This is not as good. <laughs> hey, it's a 15. Uh, maybe it's some sort of, uh, what is the protective magic? Uh, abjuration? Yeah, abjuration magic. Uh, but it's, uh, it's very powerful. It doesn't seem like maybe someone cast it. It seems like this is something really big. Something around here must be causing this. Does it seem... It's very powerful. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna assume it's stay. It's green. <laughs> it's definitely like the magic type you've never seen like uh Vial, yeah, like... which would you would know the most uh is evocation mm -hmm. magic focused and the cantable kingdom on the other side of you which you would know about is really abjuration magic so it's got a lot of abjuration magic that you would recognize but yeah it's totally fey inspired uh but yeah. this big and... of magic like this especially barriers and stuff like that you've seen kingdoms and stuff build so maybe this is because this is like a pass, a toll, or something. Something to yeah. do with this. Vibe. Um. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, he's conflicted between trying to, to explore. What is what is behind him? If the barrier's in front of him. Uh, as around, you look out, it comes out of the rocky, cold mountains into this vast window screen grass rolling hills teletubby land of wonder um it's almost like a light in harmony hum it's bright and sparkly there are different animals a variety there are plants that are exotic um and just way off in the distance are bright colored fairies and there's a big monorail that goes right over your head coming from vial towards summit the large large structure the center of silver Nell. I think hey. you... <laughs> the quiet highlands! I did it! <laughs> um, <laughs> Ashley has a moment. Um, you know, all his life dreams have come true in only a matter of hours. And he's like, oh, God, I really am just that great. Oh, I left home for the first time and then immediately got picked by gods to be all important. And then I, the thing I wanted happened right after. <gasps> oh, it's a good day for me. Okay. <sighs> okay. Oh, wow. So... Meanwhile, <sighs> those two soldiers have brought uh, you a person and uh, lit the slip up to meet their commander. And they're going to introduce... Oh, we didn't even get your names. Uh, you can call me Lip the Slip, and this is Ilwa. Hmm. Uh, the commander steps forward. They're all very similar in the way they look. Long, white hair. Large, uh, like, golden and silvered... Um, armor that's very large they're all extremely jacked um and she stands there very kind and gives a bow uh the other two kind of walk back down um and she's going to uh tell you uh she's going to apologize for the inconvenience for the pass being closed but that uh her guards have told them of uh, some great powers <laughs> you have um i wonder where you trained perhaps in odoron or uh, mill west uh, Ilwa maybe even kind of chuck Ilwa chuckles and knocks on uh uh no Ilwa, Ilwa chuckles lip chuckles and then lip knocks on Ilwa's leg and he goes <laughs> use a shard mine they're telepathic oh the shard mine wow well yeah. your parents must be very proud off on your own doing what you wish I'm I'm joyous for you and I I I would like to extend Vail's gratefulness for all your years of service. Oh yeah, House of G all the way. And they flash their crest from the, the House of G from Beirut. <laughs> um, they're, they're nobles. They have a noble crest that, that uh, he has an, absolutely has the noble feet. So he has a crest from his house. And then they also wear that crest because their armor is emblazoned with it. So okay. like, we're, yeah, we're royal. We're, yeah. <laughs> Soldier's going to walk around this wall and walk down here. 
and indicate this large glowing shrine with three empty bowls in front. Um, it seems Vail and the food folk are at odds. The lights of Fridge have been lit, and there must be a meal, a discussion. While the lights of Fridge are lit, there is no travel to the Quiet Highlands through the Quiet Pass. Some conflicts, or meals, last for weeks. In this conflict, our interpreter would usually talk, but has recently passed away due to trench foot, um, and things have not been going well. Um, there are three lights of Fridge. They're going to indicate the one in front of you, the one all the way to the other side, on the Fey side, mm -hmm. at the bottom of this map, and then one directly in the middle. Um, when three individuals of other sides to their own fridge, or their light of fridge, when they offer something of great value in one of those bowls to the altar of fridge, it starts to light up a little. Um, uh, so three of them have to be put down, and then it consumes those things, and then it will light up, letting the other side know they have a great issue, something to bring up. So they're not used to communicating other than these lights. They look out for the light. If they have a problem, oh, we should do our light, get our light lit. Perfect. Let's all go down in the middle. We'll light this one, and it'll stay there until we have conversation. When all three lights of the fridge are lit, that magic wall comes up. Um, and then once you're done, we start with the middle, and we take our offerings back. However, it, the fridge is a god in Silvernell that the food folk worship. And Fridge takes something as a... It has to be great value for you, and he only gives you the essence of whatever you donate back. So, for example, they gave him one time a, a sword of great fiery power, and it gave them the power of some of fire back instead of the sword. So a little nerfed. So it went somewhere. Um, but, uh, yeah. It's kind of like a payment for lighting it. So yeah, there's a conversation going on, and we have no idea what the issue is. And we're trying to communicate. Oh well, you got the right guys for the, you got the right people for the job. You know, uh, we could get anything solved. for, you know, partiers and also great communicators because when in doubt, drink it out. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps there is more time for merriment when our conflict is resolved. This has cost the kingdom and summit a lot of money. So, let's do it. If you can let's successfully help us turn off the lights of fridge and soothe this issue, there will be a reward for you. Yeah, let's go talk to the the food folk. Let's okay. See what's up. So she's going to lead you all the way down here. What a cardio hill. All right. Boom. Oh, so quickly. And. Uh, just stand back and watch you do your thing. You see this really angry, four foot tall, large stalk of celery that's just like, I died, I died, I died, I died. just a really angry. And beside him are a bunch of rambling radishes that are about three foot tall. And then behind them are these very big, jacked, six foot eight eggplants. <laughs> and the celery yeah. puts up his hand and they all stop and he walks towards you. Uh, a person steps forward, extends their kneels, extends their hand like kind of like they're uh, kind of like bowing down. Then they look up and then speak into their mind. There seems to be a discrepancy between you and our friends here, blocking the path. And as long as he can speak one language, um, he can understand me. And he's in within sixty feet. You hear back into your own mind. Can he can he communicate back tele telepathically? Yeah. How long? Mm -hmm. Just infinitely? And as long as we stay within range. Until um, and until and, and as long as I will it. Do you speak for the Vial Kingdom? I do. The Fey and the Quiet Highlands for a long time has been a fertile ground of growth. And all of this trade is stumping on our ground. All of us here were born of a generous farmer in the very soil of the Quiet Highlands. We are not happy with the trampling of this path back and forth. The monorail above 
it speeds on by. We need something new. Or no pass. It will relay your concern. Uh, <coughs> and then Ilwa uh, stands up, turns around. And then she looks at uh, <laughs> Lip, tells him all that. And Lip is like, uh, so basically, they don't want you walking through their area anymore because it's kind of disrespectful. They grew up here. You're destroying their home, and they're mad about it. So you guys need to go around. They seem okay with the monorail because it's not doing that. It's going over it. So go around, go through, but you or not through. Go around it, go over it, maybe. Uh, but we can't. They don't want us walking through here, or they're not going to open this because we're stepping on their stuff. We understand the concerns of the food folk. We've come over time to realize that it's kind of crazy how they're born is the land is so fertile and magical that one out of a hundred things that are planted or made from the actual elements of that earth, so to speak, will create a sentient being. We get that, and, and by all means, their land is amazing. However... We have had detailed conversations with them. They wish to trade with us. We wish to trade with them. There are some things that simply cannot go on the monorail, and there are those who simply cannot afford to trade on the monorail. We are trying to offer a cheaper opportunity for our constituents, for the living in Asmar Plains. We simply don't know where else in the Silver Mountains. It's quite dangerous. They've agreed to this spot. We built it this spot because of them. Tell them if this is not what they want, then what else could they want from us? We must continue to walk. Well, I mean, do we have to walk? I think that's so bipedal of you, bro. Like, what if you had wings? You could just fly over it. What if you, what if you teleported? People teleport. I teleported here. What if you teleport to the other side? How long is but the But what farm? about those who cannot walk? What about people who wish to make a new life in the Quiet Highlands? They can't kill people to do that. That's kind of fucked, don't you think, man? Like, they also live here first. Well, what else do they suggest? Uh, look kind of... Or it would, then looks at, at them, kneels down again. Um, uh, there seems to be problems on our side with finding new needs. Do you have suggestions for how we can accommodate Go anywhere else. Don't be here. That's it. He's stepping all over. There's so many uh, food folk cannot live because their home has been trampled with all the footmarks. Agreement has been made in prior time to this location. We tear up that agreement. But we cannot tear up the agreement. We must amend it. We must find a new way. Is there a way we can help you to relocate your farms to a slightly more adjacent area that is more safe. Oh, no, it is not farms. It is the all the ground of the Quiet Highlands. Uh, we do not side with Summit or the Hoppers or any of your kingdoms. This is our part of the land, and you step they, on our own home. You say they do, they are just, they're walking on the, on the land is destroying it because they are not innately magical. So they're hurting they're You're crushing. Home. I see. Mm. And then he, uh, she looks at a uh, lip, gives him all the rundown. Lip's like, "All right, so update." <laughs> Thought it was you were stepping on their farms, and they were sad about it. Plot twist. You're imagine like, let's make it really cool for you, Vaillers. Okay, imagine you got a really nice carpet, right? And then. You bring in some new people and they have really, really dirty shoes and they keep walking on a spot and no matter how much you scrub it, you can't get that dirt out and that carpet is never as clean. You are the dirty footprints. They are the carpet. They don't like that. We have had the quiet pass for over 30 years. This was a space they designated. If we cannot walk here, where else can we walk? No, I think the problem is that you're walking. Uh, I'm not sure. I think they like, walk to get here. Right, but they have magical feet because they came from the land. Since you're not from the land, your feet hurt the magic and you kill it. You're killing the quiet highlands by being there because you're not from there. So maybe you can't live in the quiet highlands, but you can still trade with them 
if you make a trade post here at this here fridge where everyone has to come and just meet to do stuff and no one has to cross lines. I mean, obviously you can't live in the Quiet Highlands, but get it, you're not from the Quiet Highlands, so you shouldn't live there anyway. Uh, that's just on, you know, not colonize it, but whatever. Uh, okay, uh, I, 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 I understand. Well, if we were to build a trade post, we would need to boost up our employment because there's simply not enough. They could be the only ones to walk. Perhaps we could just get magical people to walk the other side. But building a new trade post is expensive. We would need to talk about how it would be paid for. But also, I can speak for us that it's it's not off the table. Question. They see you didn't have a problem with doing... I wonder if... And she kind of looks at uh, Iwa, and then they have a moment. Iwa looks at the guy, kneels down again. Can you walk freely on this side of the line? Do you want to, could you leave the Quiet Highlands to trade with us? Instead of us coming into your land, could you come into our land and get things to bring back to you so we don't trample on your people and your people can explore the other world that you have here? A food for- I must talk to my radishes. He's going to walk over and they're just like, like baby birds. <laughs> Yeah. Um, he's going to uh, w walk back over. It is no good. This is our land, and if the Vile Kingdom wish to trade with us, they can bring to us and we can move it. They must buy a whole new trading post here. They must fix it up. They request from us. They... That sounds to be an agreement as well. I was simply curious, it, is it as if to the interest of you leaving the Quiet Highlands? Not that you had to, just curious about that on the other end. But, welcome to stay. I think a trading post would be a good way, if you also agree, they think that they can potentially talk that out. They re require some time to build it and to get it manned, but making a trading post potentially, and then kind of notes the fridge, uh, at the fridge here, so that they don't have to cross into your land, and you can still request for communal conferences, and uh, maybe this could be a nice common ground for food folk to meet with people and share information and trade without having to have them step foot into your home and hurt it. Roll a persuasion check. I don't check. think they... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Does she have persuasion? Let's find out. Okay, here, we, here we go. I hope it's a high roll, girl, cuz. <laughs> Can I get an advantage? Can somebody help me? Can it oh, let, yeah. Uh, or lip? Is lip persuasive? Is lip more persuasive than this negative one? I hope so. <laughs> gotta be. I got, a, I got a plus two. Ooh, he's a charisma caster, so I guess. <laughs> sure. He's a drunk. Yeah, like yeah drunk. you can have advantage with help. Okay, also, hear me out. Lip also has, because I was really bad at, at, she's not a talker, so he knows what to do. He also has the cantrip, because he can cast spells. He has a cantrip guidance, so I can add a D4. <laughs> it's like, literally he's like, hey, you, I got this. Yes. Like, he's like, <laughs> guidance is kind of like a preliminary spell. It's kind of like a get ready for it. If he's, if I he's think like, it designates out, before like, the roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But good to know that it lasts for a hot second, so you can... 14. I'm still going with a minus one here, so I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. She don't like people. We agree to a talk on our turf. Send your biggest negotiator. Wait. Don't you not want us on your turf? Because it kills your turf? Well, uh, like, this building here is their turf. And it's, oh, it's, it's technically, like, a half and half... Paint again. Right here is this, oh, this green building. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, like all of this on this map is half and half. Yeah. You know. Okay. Gotcha, so it's not. Gotcha. I thought they meant. I see. I see. I thought they meant um, like on the supply further. Uh, I think that's me. And it was stands up, still speaking telepathically. Stands up. Only I can speak with you freely, so I shall go with you freely. Uh, yeah. The Vile Kingdom is like. Uh, well, we need to send someone. 
I'll go with you because well, you can't negotiate our prices and our demands. So you'll translate. We'll go together. Cool. So yeah, it would, yeah, it would take, we'll take one of the, with them boom. With them. We'll, so we'll say you guys went off into the building and we will come back to you in a hot second. Standing in the middle. We'll end up the three. Rude. <laughs> lip and uh, soldiers and their radishes. All right, brain. Everyone just kind of looks at you. Wish me. <laughs> uh, lip the slip. Lip. Lip's like, do uh, you guys, it looks at the, the food folk. Holds up his beers. You guys drink. They can't understand what he's saying. He's like holding up his beers. He's like drinking one. One of the radishes uh, walks over. Puts it out to you. It takes it. I'm not gonna give you the other one. He reaches out <laughs> for the other one. Oh, no, no, no. I then I go, I start chucking mine. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna try to like grab up to you. All right, strength check, <laughs> athletics check versus athletics check. For sure. <laughs> oh damn it. I thought he's a good sound, but also I'm level four, so let's see what happens. He got a seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Continue, continue. I got a not seven. I got a sixteen. I'm, like, I'm just gonna like do that thing. Yep. Yeah. It's like trying to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably he the just, same height as me. I'm also tiny. <laughs> uh, one of the vile soldiers is gonna walk up behind you. Uh, it's okay. We'll take it from here. Um, and the food folk, and two of the radishes in that faith, uh, or the elf. A soldier are going to bow in front of these bowls as the light is going to go out and these little uh, uh, like bright lights almost like a little star comes out to them um, and they cup it each in their hand you see the elf soldier just kind of put it up against her sword on her back and her sword is going to glow before it goes dim again and you see one of the radishes it's just going to eat it and just his body is going to glow this like purple and then stop and the other one's going to eat his and his body's going to glow red and then stop and then that light will go out the drama it's kind of hot la, la, la. eat more stuff who's this what, eh, oh celery I see okay. okay back at the building um they have a conversation uh the uh the celery wants uh, vile kingdom to pay for the whole trading post and to redo this whole thing and to make it where people cannot go to the other side heavily guarded and only things that can be traded with their people that they install and vile's gonna pay for their people and pay for their time and she's like we don't have that kind of money we don't have that money re allocated for this the queen will not go for this the queen is busy doing a big initiative right now to try to get a universal uh health care for everybody different ports set up where you can go to a cleric um it's her big mission so we, we can't this at the very very least it has to be a 60 40 60 being the food folk 40 vital that's the best they can do and food folk says nope whole thing yeah but also it will will we'll speak to the uh vial and food folk seem to be under impression that you need them is that true? Uh, on the contrary, uh, our biggest import is vegetables from the Hopper's Farm. These vegetables are as big as carriages. Uh, they have completely dominated uh, trading. And, you know, we've built up our own trading in Asmar Plains with other places, but they rely on our people to eat their food. But do they need, but they don't need to come in here to get the food. It is made here. But do the people need no, to No, they... What I guess I'm saying is they need to trade here. Not necessarily here, but they need to trade. But no, they don't need to come over. But they're free to come over. Our doors are open to them. Yes, I think they seem to not be a, uh, feeling very welcome here. If memory serves, they were never really 
consensually invited to this plane, Asgrath and all. That is true. And yeah, we do sympathize with that. The Vile Kingdom has a hard stance on showing kindness and love to the to the beings of the Quiet Highlands. We will do what it takes to solidify a, a, a good, working, friendly relationship. However, we cannot afford that at the moment. There must be another way. Agreed. Their negotiations must be made. Some negotiations must be made. Looks at the food folk. Uh, <clears throat> it will kind of try to just kind of talk them down into not it, it being at least like more 50 50 like because it just seems like the food folk are trying to like to do no like less than half the work and she's trying to get it at least from food folk 60, are trying 40, to do 50. no work right she's trying to get it and she's like she's going for 60 40 we're like what if we do 50 50 and also like put it on a slow progressive scale over time because it's like they can keep trading they just all need right to not uh go roller persuasion check for both of them so just roll Lock. one roll yeah. one for both of them all right coming in with this negative one let's see how it goes Oh. Oh, 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 and my friend's outside. <laughs> of your house? No. Oh, lips yeah. outside. No yeah, advantage. Yeah. Okay, I got an eight. <laughs> um, no the Vial Kingdom says we could do fifty-fifty, but I I will take a large punishment probably for making this deal. But in the long run, it will help the kingdom and help our relationship. Food folks says no. Nope. Looks at food folk. Why you disagree? You need to get rid of your cabbages, otherwise you will have too many of them. We did not ask to come here. All our family been here for over 200 years. We not ask for any of this. Vail is trying to extort the food folk. Laugh at us. Call us lesser. We will not stand for it. They must show solidarity with the food folk by paying for everything. What would the farmer say if he said that someone else had to do all the work for his farm? Well, then he would die. Wouldn't he just build the farm himself, do the work? You have to do the work sometimes, or at least some of it. You have to be the farmer in this situation. You have to plant some seeds of change. You don't want to be here, but do you have a way to get back to the Feywild? I do not have one for you, and if you cannot fix that, then you must live with it. You can explore this world. It's much more vast than the Feywild, and you can always... Sorry. Much more vast than the Quiet Highlands. No? Ah, uh, it was like, who calls it which one? And she's like, mm. But she, says, she calls it both ways. She's like, the Feywild slash the Quiet Highlands. Born Freon like, is like the slur. <laughs> okay, that's what she's not saying. She's like, okay. she's like, mm. She's like, so she's like, people don't like them these words. Yeah. Um, also, she's like a press person. She's like, I got it. Uh, the world is very hard out there, surely, but you can do many things. Go into the world and make a business. Show them that the food folk are not lesser. They are better. Go take over their world. Go be better farmers. Be better soldiers. Be better them. Prove a point. What have you got to lose? Roll a persuasion check. Ah, that man do that. It's all night. It's just gonna be all night. <laughs> Me, gotta go well at some point. An eleven. <laughs> Still roll with this minus one, y'all. The vile soldier's the gonna chat. lean over your shoulder and say, "The farmers are like their parents," and uh, he's going to say, oh, "I have a lot of respect for my farmer. Last Farmer's Day, I gave him a gourd. I made from myself for two biscuits." non-sentient <sighs> he opened it up and ate it his purple mustache growing and shrinking just like it always does and he told me when life tries to take your oversized vegetation you make sure to make them pay for it I understand what you're trying to do for the vile kingdom and I respect you but we will not budge. I'm sorry, but unless it, it can be fully paid for, this door remains closed. Soldier puts her hands up. This is getting us nowhere. Correct. But the question I ask now is, who loses? Vayu surely can continue with their lives without your kingdom. 
But if you stay locked behind that door, your people will die. You will run out of room. You'll overpopulate. There's not enough space inside of there. You'll have to come out, and then they will think you are lesser because you will be on your knees, desperate to get out of there. Or you can come out now, embrace it, and have some say in things. I cannot make you choose what to do. My mustache does not grow big and small. I have no mustache at all. <laughs> but what I can do is tell you to take charge of your life. As a shard, mind people think that me and, and my kind will bring back Cthulhu because technically on a piece of paper, if you were to write things down, that is what would happen. But that is not what I'm doing. I'm living my own life, my own truth. I am a part of a greater farm, so to speak. I was a thing, truly a gate, not even a person. And now I'm a person, and I do what I want, and I think you should as well. Fuck the farmer. Uh, well, with that last one, he's going to, <laughs> he is going to say, Republic, get your parents. <laughs> he is just going to just look at you. Hmm. And, uh, walk out, and you just hear him yelling to a bunch of people. Uh, Lip the Slip's gonna see him coming down the stairs, uh, yelling at all the vegetable, and you see they're all just going to, uh, pull out their bows and their arrows, and put their arrows on their bows, and he is going to walk up across, and he is just going to start yelling at those vile soldiers and Lip, or, and just... It was like, I think we should go outside. They're probably going to be angry. <laughs> also, they're going to stay behind that door, which seems to be not a big problem for you guys. Uh, so, no more giant radishes for now, but they will come out. It will be a time. She's got a thousand head, and she starts heading outside. And she, and she you know, <laughs> kind of flexes her back a little bit. Grabs that bow. She's like, these little fucking fuckers. <laughs> kind of looks at it. She's like, Harper and Toro. <laughs> and she walks outside. What do you want to do? Uh, I guess, are they, are they, are they just out there side yelling currently? Like, they, they've taken uh, out their Yeah, weapons. that celery is uh, yelling at Lip and, uh, and those vile soldiers. Yeah, but they can't understand each other, so she's really just being the, like, oh, Yeah, and now the radishes are pressing in, yelling at them too, and the eggplants. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to engage them. They're going to be mad all they want to, but also they're locked outside their house, and they can't get in either, so they outnumbered. They can't get reinforcements. So it was kind of just like looking at them, and she has her bow out. She's holding it down, uh, kind of relaxed, but ready to you know snap off. But she's not going to start anything with them. Yeah, the Lip. soldier is going to tell you we want to avoid physical contact. Contact. I like fighting. Yeah. At all costs. Lip, will, it, Lip is like, whoa, guys, why are you all yelling? We just had some beers. We're chill. What's going on? The radishes you know, are going to start reaching for your mugs. And, uh... He's got a strong grip on them. Alright, uh, two athletic checks. First one, you have to beat a seven. Second one, you have to beat a seven. <laughs> They're so weak! I got a 9 oh. and a 24. All right, so one of them grabs onto your arm to, like, pull you down. Ah, he kind of gets you where the mug is, but you kind of just, like, fling it. He just flies past you, and the other one tries to bring your arm down. You just pop your arm away from him, and they're all kind of circling, and the eggplants are walking over to get this mug. They're kind of circling you guys. Why do they want my mug now? You can't have my mug. These are my mugs. You have your own mugs. The soldier here. is going to yeah back up. All right, two more athletics check from the eggplants. Oh my god, these were eighteen. Um, Twenty and an eight. Okay. They got one of my mugs. Uh, yeah, eggplants just gonna rip it out of your hand as you're like holding it up, trying to get away from the radishes because he's really tall. You're really short compared to him. Okay, Scott. Well, he needs to make a, a exposed. Athletic check because I'm gonna grapple him because I want my bug back. Okay. <laughs> Nine. Twenty-two. <laughs> All right, you got him. And you're holding on. His bugs up in the air. Urgh! All right, the other eggplant is going to try to punch you. Oh god. 
This is escalating. Hit that, hit that 20, bitch. It was a 20. <laughs> no, my AC's 20. <laughs> it was a dirty 20, which makes it... A 23! You're gonna take six points of bludgeoning damage from his big old vegetable fist. Now let me ask you this. Are we rolling initiative? Lip is not responding to the hit. He's really wants to his cut back. Uh -huh. um, he could care less that he's getting punched. Uh, Ilwa, however, is like, the fuck going on? Like, she sees this happening. She looks at the guy who's like, we're not fighting them. And she's like, so what's your plan to de-escalate the situation at hand here? Hey, this is like, out of character for them. They, they're they normally not this handsy. There's some, I, must be something about your friend they like. That or those cups he's holding. They seem to want that mug, and he very much likes his mugs. What's in those mugs? Beer, ale, the finest ale well, in that, Beirut. They don't have alcohol, so yeah. I, I don't know why they'd want it. He likes to share, so perhaps they've tasted some, and now they want more. I could ask them, but yes, quickly. Seems... Let's go. Let's go try to settle this. All right. <clears throat> she walks down there, looks at the guy holding the mug, looks in his kind of eyes, kind of like she's not being polite about this. Her eyes dart open, kind of gem-like. Looks in his brain or looks into his eyes and speaks in him. Why do you take the mug? Big eggplant. Yeah, whoever's holding, <gasps> everyone's holding the mug up. <clears throat> Tasty drink for all the food folk many new kinds of family we take this as a heavy offering oh what do you mean you hear the salary yelling out oh so different and new so many possibilities he, he wants he wants your your drink something about it he finds it a new material new something that inspires him you you really like it that much? I do. I won't keep give up much for it. Are you willing to give up the mug? It seems we are willing to take it as some form of payment. Does it bring down the barrier? No, but we'll pay for 20%. 40% and we'll teach you how to make the ale. It's a family secret from the house of G. 30% and you give us the other mug. 35% we keep one of the mugs and the tavern <clears throat> port that we built here exclusively sells that wine or that, that ale. You can always get it right here, only here, just for you guys to take back. Uh, always fresh on you tap. hear <clears throat> behind you and the elf sultan guards are like, we can't promise yeah. that. Hmm. Roll a persuasion check. <laughs> well, this guy's... Oh, the fuck up Illa again. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> but Lip's there. Lip is there. Yeah, <laughs> Lip is there. Fourteen. Oh, wait, I got this. Also, my guidance. Hey, there it is. I took off my negative one. Fifteen. <laughs> Deal. We go back up and we write up the papers and I'll turn off the light of fridge. Looks at, uh, looks at, um, <laughs> the bio guy. Uh, they seem to have a deep obsession with things that are unknown to them. So I think we can offer them more things and then they will feel less betrayed. If they like this thing, and we'll go to 35%, we can give them more things. Listen, more things no, that we fine, have. No, that's fine, that's fine. Reba, go with them and sign papers. You don't need to talk to them to sign their papers. No, get it up. Gonna... Make it go higher. Get it out of 35%. I want it higher. <laughs> if they will take 35% for one thing that we have so easily ale, there are things they just don't have there that they want to feel more important. We can give them more things they don't tell Reba goes to pull off. the celery away, but he stops. <laughs> he sees you talking about stuff. <laughs> yeah, ah! goes in. She's like... We can offer them more things that they don't have, so that way they get more. So, they just don't so want what? to we, lose. We want to go get mugs? No, this one wants ale, and he got us 35%. I want to know what these, these other ones might have things that they want from the outside world that we can provide at this tavern port to make it more appealing uh, to them versus just us getting stuff from them. They want things in return. 
ale is one of them. Like, well, ask them if they'll if take they anything else. We're going to do pseudo offerings. He looks back at the guy. <clears throat> what are other things that we can pr uh, provide for you all that would be considered these offerings, great offerings that can be housed here? So that way you feel you get more for helping us build this uh, port here. That way by you can give you ale and many other things that would be great offerings, but this time they give them to you freely. They come here to the port with the ale and then you get the items and ale. We will like pay. You give us the mug. You build a tavern and you build a school that teaches how to make this delicious, wonderful drink. And then and only then will we pay 45%. You don't know how to build a school, but what if I moved, we moved someone to a farm or started a farm? Nope, cannot go in. We, we, what if we taught someone who could make a farm on your side to do that and then they taught the no, no, no. If anyone at Hopper Look Farms things. or the Sickly Springs gets word of this, then they will want it for themselves. This will be ours. And we will... Well, all who come through here will see it, so it's kind of freaky. Right, right, but we will own it. We 50... We 45-65 partnership. Looks School, tavern... 45-65? Port. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <It's> like, sure, <laughs> sure, sure, fine. Just... Yes, that's right. Also, not going to be real school. <laughs> yes. Agreed. Reba, please. <laughs> and Reba is the soldier is going to take the celery folk or the food folk uh, back into the building, and they're going to uh, turn off I'm a survivor. and take their items. And they're going to take their lights off a of fridge. Butcha. Ah, thank you. Uh, and now uh, the soldier. Oh, all those vegetables are going to all these main ones here along the path are going to go inside to join the talks and all of these here are going to go in to join the talks as well the other ones will stay on the other side of that magical barrier and can we see uh, through this barrier or is it like yeah you can it's very foggy you can see like the wobbly shape can i see absolutely on the other side of that barrier being weird <laughs> roll a perception check as you look out right now Also, I keep forgetting I got this damn fine familiar. This bird on me. It's fine. It is. I, my perception is... Okay. It's not a negative, so that's always good. Uh, 13. Uh, you can see general shape of Where's... Absty. Because you know Absty's on the other side, you might figure that it's Absty. Right. Let's basically still uh, We gotta get our... Do I need to be able to see them? I don't want to talk to myself. Is there... Can I communicate with them? No, I want to do that. Um, <laughs> then it's like, all right. And it's like, then it was kind of like, do I need to go inside for these talks? Who's speaking? No, no, they they're going right? to sign they're now. It's it's pretty much done. But now we need to go inside our guard towels, towers, and we need to communicate with Vial what we've just agreed to. And we need to figure this out. And you need to come because if I get in trouble, you're sharing in the blame. Oh, sure. I open the gate. You all get to stay in the glory. Okay, so they're going to take you back to their guard towers and get in on some sendings and uh, communicate with one of the uh, advisors to the to one of the things of the queen, just kind of far down the line. Um, so, Vail is willing to go 65, 55... Uh, by direct order of Queen Adrora to build the port. Now, unfortunately, we don't, we don't, we can, we don't know what to do about the tavern or the school. We don't necessarily know who's going to lead that. That's a, it's a big endeavor. Any ideas? House of G does make the recipe, so I think if they were in charge of, you know, moving up and helping out Vail is always on the family's goal. I think if they were to bring a tutor over and a uh, one of our, our crafters, 
they could, the duo themselves could help run a tavern school of sorts, a bar school um, to teach and provide uh, a sort of extra service on top of the, ta- the, the, the port. I don't know what the port mm. actually does, but then you go to the port, you can also get these fine drinks, one of a kind that the Fae love. And, and they, they are in two. Garnak? Thalsa G? Thalsa G is in, uh, it, it's been, it's back, it's farther. B2, what is it called? B2, uh, the last place before the water? Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's right, like it's the farthest B2. point. Okay, yeah, cool. From, we're from B2, we're one of the royal houses there. Um, what is the usual, for- what is the usual, uh, what is their overhead, their expenses, their prices, their profits? What are we looking at here? Uh, well, this is the, if House of G is, is doing this, it'd be on House of G, of course, and they will just, if you can provide them with, they're just so far away. If you can provide them with means to teleport here or some sort to get to this import, a way, you know, a way to get so far away. It'd probably can, be best if they relocated completely. Perhaps we could help pay for the movement of their place, if that's something they're interested in, and we could relocate them here. We wouldn't have to build a whole new place. We could probably add, add it on to the guard tower. But uh, if they already are doing that, we could relocate them here. Now, the cost would be a little expensive, so we'd ask for maybe a percentage. But we could probably guarantee a lot more activity for them. I don't know how they are in B2. It's the, in my mind, the be, uh, this this alcohol brand is like the thing that that this, that this one of the things this family's known for. They like do big parties. They are mm-hmm. exorbitant. They have this this wine line, mm-hmm. um, which is this, this alcohol. And kind of he's just like the, the the pitch is he's sending people two guys to come here. One is going to teach. One's going to make. And they're going to work at wherever do this do this thing. And we, which they will do for free. House of G is comping it. They're like they are like so. This would be like a like, franchise. Basically, Absidy is like, we're going to flex Absidy's privilege. I'm like, we're just going to send a House of G. Yes, they're going to be like, oh, this is like a House of G establishment. Like, yeah. And we'll pay for it. And is like, this Absidy's so, family? Yeah, it's, it's the royal family that Absidy's from. How is Absidy able to negotiate this? Absidy's not there. Right. He's he's just like, hey, my parents are going to do it because my parents run everything. And they're just going to do this thing. He's like, and he's like, it's like. No, no, I mean, like, like Absidy is, isn't Absidy on the other side of that magic wall? He has no idea there's conversations going on. Right, no, but they they are they're all part of like the house, and so they're just speaking for Absidy. Oh, they're all, like, oh, they're and like, you like, and Lip. Yeah, yeah, uh, they they are not like they're not they are like our members of the house, but he's like a son of he's like the son gotcha. of the thing. They're like they're the homies, and so they're like oh, he can definitely do these. Like that's the thing okay. he can easily flex. Um, like his dad's wine. If you can get us a security from them, we can sign something and work something out. Then uh, that'll that'll be perfect. Uh, can we send? Well, we can't send this anything to him. We we don't know them. All right, great. Yeah, say, well, what are your that. ideas on um, so a House of G franchise? House uh, of G winery. Ooh, that kind of rhymes. Okay, so we will help mm-hmm. pay. We'll go fifty-fifty on this building of the House of G, and it'll be a fifty-fifty profit. We'll yeah. just go straight down the middle. Yeah. Okay, we'll workshop the name. We can figure it out. We'll sign it and get in contact with them. That's great. What about the school? They will also teach. Yes, I think I don't think it'll be an actual school. They will also just be like, we te- you can have do you like this wine? We can also show you how to make it at home. Like, come take a cooking class here. Like that kind of like school, not like a, a right. In the sense of like making a culinary school versus making a college. It's like, oh, come learn how to make this thing here that we make really well, and we sure. can teach how to do it. And the faithful can come there and learn how to do it. And but have, like, little we request that and these the that this be built on our half more towards inside the mountain and less out there to invite the food folk more onto our turf to start helping us integrate we don't want yes. to get into a territorial situation like this again absolutely yeah oh yeah absolutely absolutely or house of g would be done with that because absolutely is all about you know uh fey right so he's like put it on their side he's like he's that kind of guy he's like i have all the money and he's like and i love philanthropy but also i'm a douchebag if it's not about that philanthropy and this just happens to be the thing he loves so he's like he'll do it, he'll make his dad do whatever he needs to do um to do that so that's hmm. great if he can make a his get the name that far out here and be like boop so he yeah he would do that perfect but also we need him to get up this uh area. we will take a moment we'll send some sendings and try to get some messages back on this uh you know enjoy yourself there is 
you know, some drinks over there and some food if you're interested. It'll only take us a moment. And they're going Lip to go... almost breaks his neck. <laughs> <You can> say, <laughs> drinks? <laughs> um... Uh, yeah, and so there's just you two and a couple guards standing at the door, and just the the one that you were there with before is just chilling as the other people went in the other room. I appreciate this. You've been a great help. Uh, Ilwa doesn't say anything. Lips kind of sad, and Lips like, don't, don't. She, we pre we are happy to help. Don't feel any way. She doesn't talk to people normally. I've never actually seen her say more that many words ever. So. Kudos to you, man. Um, She's very I think persuasive. She might go into a coma. <laughs> I don't think you should say that out loud. She might kill you. Um, <clears throat> but she can be persuasive in that way, just not with her <clears throat> words. Uh, uh, perhaps. Um, he's like. He's like. Perhaps you are looking like, for a job as a translator. Uh, she kind of looks at him, kind of like. Side-eyed, like, uh... Or interpreter, I guess. Yeah, looks at Iwa. Or, looks at Lip. We already got a gig. We work for House of G and Absidy. We're kind of, like, uh. doing a thing. We're travelers. Also, tell new if you heard, teleported here. We kind of got bigger things going for us. Uh, teleported here? But, yeah, you didn't see us disappear out of nowhere? We just, like, appeared. Uh, no, you missed it, it's fine. Saw you walk we around the mountain. Here. Nah, we appeared. Keep, oh, well. keep it straight. <laughs> oh, it's magic. Apologies. It's cool. <laughs> he's like trash, and he's like grabbing all the glasses, like trying to find one that feels right in his hand because he's missing a glass now, and he's like mm. drinking them. He's like, no, no, getting more trash. Uh, and it was just kind of standing there, kind of stoically, just like looking around, kind of like a bodyguard. She's going back to like, she's like, I'm not talking to nobody. Word coma. She's kind of looking around. How's uh, Axe? doing? You like our our glassware? I see. It's subadequate. I would prefer something that feels better in the hand. Like I can drink with it and then at any moment stab someone with it, but then also right after that moment drink with it again and not hurt myself. Kind of like this one. You used to have two of them. But you know. Well, what you are things. holding is some of the finest uh, craftsmanship coming out of grad school. How fine is it? Uh, it's very very strong and um very very rare it was one of our gifts when we started this post the kingdom gave him to us a set of 10 only 10 well we normally don't have parties with more than 10 here kind of pulls it back maybe a set of nine and now i have two full hands hmm no, oh, I do like a bit of fun. He's going to reach into uh, a drawer inside and pull two d6s and hand you one. Whoever rolls the highest out of three rolls, you win, you keep it. I win. Well, we wait. get to keep it. <laughs> First wait, roll. Wait, roll it. Oh, I see. I got a one. Five. A five, all right, five. and then add this next roll. Roll number two. I got a five, which makes it six. I got a one, so six. Oh, yeah. last roll, here we go. I got a one. Four. I got oh, a four. it is your <laughs> mug. So you have this big, it's like silver, but it's just as sturdy as like a wood mug. Um, it's very intricately designed with tortles on it, uh, warrior tortles, and the handle is almost like a big uh, st magical staff that curves into this like little yellow ball that radiates. That any magical properties? Arcana check. Hold on. Writing these notes. <laughs> That's a D6 I was about to roll. A little well. Um I thought it was a one and I was like, I've never seen magic before in my life. Um, but it wasn't anything better. It was a Okay, that's the minus one. It's a six. <laughs> Can't tell. The Why people come out of the room and say the agreements have been made. The House of G has agreed. It is enacted. They thank you. And then they turn off their light 
of fridge. After the last turning off of the light of fridge, the entire magical wall goes down. Uh, the food folk and the soldiers all come out. The food folk uh, bring Absidy uh, back. And they thank you for all of your hard, persuasive effort to bring peace once again to the quiet pass between the food folk and the vile kingdom. Uh, if you're back around sometime, uh, come back. They will spend time building up this and uh, they'll be in contact with the House of G, so you'll hear there. Is there anything else you need from them as you continue your way? And they indicate into the gorgeous, quiet highlands. Um, absolutely, like, skipped all that information and was, like, very hype about what he saw. And he's like, uh, and was talking with, uh, it was telepathically, but they're all very chill. They're all very happy. Um, no, I don't think they need anything else. Um, so, does Lip, uh, so, Iwa and Absidy are magical, right? They are, they all can cast magic. They're all magical? Okay. Yeah. Hey. Yes. Then One they're... of them is cleric magic, and then two of them are, like, magic magic. Cleric you know? magic, still like, magic. Yeah, then yes. Okay, then they are all good. They just had to verify before you stepped in there. Ah, yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Paladin, Arcane Trickster, and a Druid. So, <laughs> uh, As you guys uh, walk into uh, the Fae, into this vast, gorgeous, smells-good land of bright sunshine and hope and dreams, um, they all wave behind you as it seems these two places are getting back to normal and people are now starting to come to this trade port that had been waiting before. Anything you'd like to do before you walk into the Fae, it's yours to take. He is is screaming about everything he's seen to lip. He's he's fawning. He wants to touch everything. He wants to see everything. Is anything cool he can? See? I mean, everything to him is like he's like a baby who just like was born. He's like, oh my god, everything's wild. He's in Disney World. Is anything of note that he like can see? It's all for the first time. So anything of note that he's like, <gasps> my throat is closing up. Like he's like, um, gagged about the the land is very dramatic in its uh, rolling hills. Uh, some hills even kind of like droop up and over a little bit, uh, but the grass is sweet, um, and now you know that the ground is magical, and that one out of a hundred times with things grown here, they become sentient. Uh, Not necessarily takes... in the ground, but natural things taken to make other things. Yeah, he the, he like takes their hands, both of them on their side, and he's like, "Wow, to think we left home." Literally yesterday, it's so good. Ah! It kind of like <laughs> has this where he's like, yeah, and they, you know, are having a great life. <laughs> a big, f you can't see this way up in the air, way above the stratosphere, way past the sentient cube, and the vastness of the pantheonic uh, rooms of whatever they fucking are. <laughs> Brun Toro's hand comes crashing down in front of Summer Song. Nobody died. Yes, I know nobody died. They solved it in a very persuasive way. Didn't you see? It was kind of amazing. It brought a tear to my eye. No, that's not the story I want. Go back to where you killed them all with the dragon. Now listen here. One of them just got to the Feywild and wishes to make a kingdom. Yes, I know of that kingdom. We should stop talking about it. Do you side with Asgrath? No, I'm not saying that. Because I'll fuck you up, Runtoro. I'd like to see you try. All right. Listen, let's calm down. Let's calm down. We almost did it again. Can't kill death. Can't kill time. Listen. I promise you this. I'm going to let that Absidy build their kingdom. I'm going to let them restructure it. But they're going to have to go through a lot of terrifying death. <laughs> okay. I agree. Go with that. Yes, lots of death. Say it with me now, death. Death. <laughs> Don't patronize me. I get it. And that's it. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't die this time. Woo! I <laughs> also did think... assassinate a bunch of people. You, I thought it was gonna get there. I was prepared. One time I was like, hmm, I showed up and I just right. I like that doesn't always make me a good guy. Let me talk with someone this time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you everybody for watching on YouTube, on Twitch, on Facebook. We really appreciate it. Hope you had a good time. Anything you wanna say, Michael? 
Um, Scott tried to get me, and little did he know that I put a lot of thought into making this D&D &D party, and he gonna fuck around and find out that there's very little that we can't do if we don't put our mind to it, except roll persuasion checks when you're playing Ill, because that shit just never gonna be cute. <laughs> um, but even split up, they didn't die, so That's right. it's going well. It's an experiment. I love it. <laughs> we'll see everybody Thanks. next time. Bye!